Hi, how are you? I'm Anthony from Cypher House Escape, and today I want to solve a Puzzled Pint set. If you haven't heard of Puzzled Pint before, Puzzled Pint is a monthly mini puzzle hunt that takes place at a number of bars and restaurants in several different cities and locations across the world. The homepage of the Puzzled Pint website has a full list of all the cities where Puzzled Pint takes place every month. And the website also has a backlog of all the previous puzzle hunts that have been run. So if you've missed one or if you haven't played any before, uh, you have your pick of different themes and different months that uh, have been run in the past. Each set typically involves a location puzzle, which people tend to solve in order to figure out where exactly their specific chapter is holding the Puzzled Pint event that month, as well as four feeder puzzles and a meta puzzle. Also, many sets have a bonus puzzle or two associated with them as well, so there's really tons of puzzling that you can do when it comes to Puzzled Pint. These puzzles tend to be on the easier side, so I'm going to try to complete an entire set in just this one video. I'm going to be working on the puzzle set from December of 2020, which is themed after the Grinch. So let's get to it. For this video, I decided to print out the puzzles and solve them on paper. There's just something about the feel of paper and pencil puzzles that I really enjoy, and I thought that would be a lot of fun for solving this set. Now, I already solved the location puzzle to make sure that this particular setup worked, but I do have all of the other puzzles for this set already printed out and ready to go. I also have my Puzzled Pint code sheet that I've set off to the side. I might need to use that. And I have a timer that I'm going to be using to keep track of my solve today. So with that, I'm going to start my timer and begin the set. Three, two, one, let's puzzle. Hi puzzle people, it's Anthony from the future and I have a quick disclaimer. Unfortunately, some of the footage that you're about to watch was not picked up by my camera. About every 15 minutes of footage, the camera turned off and I didn't notice it for about 30 seconds to a minute each time. So there will be portions of the solve that are unfortunately cut out. I'll do my best to edit in the uh, corresponding parts of the solve that the camera didn't catch as we go along. Okay, so this round starts with an introduction. The gifts are missing, the trees bare as can be. The table is empty and Carol's off key. Who could have done this, this unspeakable sin, and ruined Whoville's Christmas before it could begin? Why we have the suspect, it's already been pinched. Who else could it be but the deplorable Grinch? Listen to him deny it, that green ne'er-do-well. It wasn't me, he shouts, though the bar through the bars of his cell. Someone set me up, besmirched my good name. I swear three times on my heart, I've been framed. The Grinch innocent? Someone so vile and uncouth? And yet, what if? What if he's telling the truth? Let's examine the facts and follow the leads, and catch the true villain behind these misdeeds. Interesting. You typically don't have an introduction for Puzzled Pints, um, at least not one uh, that takes up an entire page. So that's interesting, and I'm excited to see who framed the Grinch. Okay, it looks like we have our first puzzle. Who got what? I'm going to remove the two pages of this puzzle, and I'm just going to put the rest of the puzzles to the side for a moment. Twas Christmas morning when who girls and who boys wake to open their gifts and unbox their toys. But this year, I fear, might be sadder than most. Sadder than an old piece of leftover roast. For they opened their gifts, and what a sorry affair. This wrapping paper was wrapping nothing but air. These boxes are empty, it couldn't be plainer. Someone had taken the gifts and left their containers. But perhaps you can help and save the day by rebuilding each gift in the following way. Each gift belongs to a who, but which who, who knows? You can find their gift tags strewn about down below. Put each name in a container, though jumbled a bit, to make a new word that reveals the original gift. Here's an example so you don't have to guess. In a glass for Ned can be found gladness. Solve this puzzle to answer without bluffing. What might some of these gifts end up becoming? Okay, so we have a container, which is the gift, and in this case, in this example, glass 
is the container, and Ned has been scrambled inside of the word glass. It looks like glass itself has not been scrambled, so that's the kind of pattern that it looks like it wants us to follow here. Okay, so these are the different containers, bin, tin, pot, box, and so on, and these are the different people. Uh, the original gifts in no particular order. Okay, so these are clues for the completed gift, and we need to put the uh, container around the outside and the mixed up person on the inside. So this one probably starts with a B and ends with an N. The I could probably be on the right or left. How many spaces does that leave us with? That leaves us with five spaces, so it could be Kessar, Audrey, maybe Brooke or Tiara. Okay, there's a lot of five letter names. Uh, I think a caretaker might be a janitor. That would fit in jar. And we have Tony is mixed up on the inside. Oh, a painted likeness is probably a portrait, which fits inside of pot. And we have Tira is on the inside of that one. So Arondel has to be anagrammed with tin to get this answer because of the number of letters and that Arondel is the longest name down there. So I'm going to pull up an anagram solver on my phone and uh, use that to see if I can find the answer to this part. I'm using the Puzzle Pal app and I'm going to put in the letters for Arondel as well as the letters for tin. And we're going to do an anagram, tenderloin. Okay, so that's the steak clue. Okay, the rest of our names are five letters long, so we could do some guess and check uh, to try to pair them with some of these containers. Let's start with Brook and Bin. There wasn't anything for that one. Brook and Card. Okay, so corkboard is probably the place for memos. Sorel with box doesn't give us anything. And Sorel with case. Casserole. Okay, so that's probably the hot dish. Audrey with box gives Bordeaux. Okay, so that's the French wine. So that means a type of rug should be Kessar mixed with bin. Bearskin rug. So what's our final answer reading down? Returns. So that is our answer without bluffing to what some of these gifts might end up becoming. They might be returns. All right, so we're about 10 minutes into the timer. I'm going to put this puzzle off to the side for now and we're going to take out the next one, which is a Dolores Din. Add another crime to the Christmas crook's wrongs. The thief's gone and ruined all of the Whoville's songs. Their carols are off kilter, off beat, and off key. It's complete and utter carcophony. Work through the tunes to hear the sounds underneath and learn the item of note taken by the thief. Okay, so the legend tells us that we have single rests and whole measure rests, and then we have one count notes and two count notes. We're trying to hear the sounds underneath. I wonder if this is um, Morse code because it, it emphasizes hearing. If this is in fact Morse code, then a single beat is probably just a dot, which gives us the letter E. And then three notes is probably triple dot, which is an S. I'm not really sure that I like that start to the words there. Yeah, I don't really like that at all. Oh, actually, I just noticed this, instead of four beats per measure, there looks like there's five beats per measure. At least up here, it looks like there's five. It looks like it changes as we go down the page. So maybe each line here is a different code on the Puzzled Pint code sheet. I'm thinking this top one, this uh, top set of lines could be binary code. And maybe the notes are ones and the rests are zero. So here we have zero, 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 one, which is an A. 
and then we have 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, which is an N. Then we have another A. 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 is a Y. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 is a C. And then we have 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, which is an H. And H. Oh. Is that telling us that we need to take an H for this row? Maybe each row gives us a different letter in some way. So this was binary. This row here looks like it's Braille um, because it's the only one where nodes are kind of stacked. Braille, of course, takes a, a two by three grid pattern and it's also on the Puzzled Pint code sheet. So um, I'm pretty sure that this one's gonna be Braille. We have an A. Um, y, C, is that another H? Yeah, an H. So here we have A, so this one, G, A, I, N. Um, what other code types do we have available? We could have trinary. Do we see any that, that seem to have three? Yeah, okay, this bottom row is probably trinary. So the whole notes are twos. The rests are zeros, and the uh, single notes are ones. So this first measure... That first measure is 201, because it has a double note, a rest, which represents the zero, and a single note, which is a one. And 201 in trinary is the letter S. The next measure that you can see here has a rest, a single note, and then a double note. So that's 012, which is the letter E. E. So this first three measures here spell the word C. The full final line spells C lastly. So what could these last two lines be? We also have hexadecimal. Ah, could, could one of them, could this line be semaphore? I think the two count note connects to the two quarter notes and gives a semaphore letter. So here we have down as well as down right, and that gives us a G. Okay, so here we have down as well as upright, which is an E. Another E, E here. We have down right as well as down left, N. Okay, we have up right and down right, which is an X. And then up as well as up left, which is a T. So G is next. Um, okay, what's this last code? Is this, I don't know what code this is. Oh, it's Morse. I don't know how I missed Morse. For some reason I thought we already used Morse because I, I thought that the top line might be Morse. Okay. So this is probably dash dot, which is an N, O is a W, dot dash is an A, dash dot dash dash is a Y, and then we have a dot, which is an E. So now A, so we have H, A, G, H, C. This could, so if you say this out loud, this could be an I, hike. I don't know, I kind of want this last one to be T, because the GHT ending just makes a lot of sense. We're trying to learn the item of note taken by the thief. Height wouldn't make a lot of sense for that either, would it? Oh, high C! I get it. It's a two-word answer. <laughs> okay, great. So that's the second puzzle solved. Let's move on to the third. For the third puzzle, we have Evermean. The tree's been pilfered, it's been stripped all a bear. Not a bobble or what's it, or goo -ga hangs there. Good thing we have more trinkets to put on this pine, but the Who's have some thoughts about festive design. Follow the rules below to redress this tree, and then put your mind to a new mystery. With the bobbles back up, please help us diagnose what kind of ornament does the culprit hate most. You won't find them here, but perhaps if you try, you'll find the answer twinkling down from on high. There are four types of ornaments. There's stars, circles, diamonds, and canes. Of each, there are exactly five stars, four circles, six diamonds, and five canes. This is a, um, a two-page puzzle, so I think I'm going to need to, yeah, I'm going to need to place these different ornaments onto the tree. It looks like they've placed the first star at the top of the tree, and they gave me a, a list of where they all go. What other rules do we have? 
Ornaments are placed at these spots, and a spot is connected to another spot if there's a line between them. Additionally, there are two other kinds of decorations. There's garland, which always connects two of the same type of ornament. Then there's lights. Lights are always connected to a circle at one or the other end. Every circle is directly connected to at least one star. Every diamond must be connected to a cane lower than itself. And every cane must be connected to a diamond higher than itself. Canes are never connected to each other. Stars can only be placed at spots connected to all three of the other ornament types. That means that these three ornaments have to have one of each type. Uh, we also know that, so since garland connects to like ornaments and canes are never connected to each other, we know that the T and the I can't be canes. So um, this one has to be a cane, this letter H here. Oh, well, we also have the, the lights here. We know the lights have to have a circle on one end. So we can circle, put a circle for the T. Maybe I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the symbols beside. So we can do a circle for the T, and that means that because the star has to be connected to all three, this one is a diamond. Uh, where do we go now? The garland tells us that this one has to be a circle and this one has to be a diamond. So we have two more of those. Every diamond is connected to a cane lower than it. So this diamond up top was connected to that cane that was lower. This diamond must be connected to a cane here. I'm not sure the best way to draw a cane. I'm kind of just doing a question mark without a dot. <laughs> um, and now we know that there would be garland connecting to one of these three symbols if this E was the same as one of them. And so since it's not, we have to have a star at that position. Well, we know that the two strands of lights have to have a circle next to each of them. And since we only have two circles left, we know one of them goes over here and one of them goes over here. So the circle for this light can't go along the garland because then we would have two circles on this side. So I'm gonna put a circle down there. Actually, we also can't put a star here because the star needs to connect to all three of the other shapes. And that would mean that there's two stars along the garland here, so it, it wouldn't be able to be connected to one. We also know that canes are never connected to one another. So this shape has to be a diamond along with this shape here. Um, oh, every diamond has to be connected to a cane lower than it. So this diamond has to connect to a cane here. And this diamond has to connect to a cane over here. Ah, every circle is directly connected to at least one star. So this circle needs to be connected to a star here. And this star has to be connected to all three other shapes. We already have a circle and a cane. So we have to have a diamond over there. So we know that basically one of these two has to be a star and one of these two has to be a star. Okay, well, if we put a star here on N, then that would mean the other star is down here on S. And for this star on S to be connected to all three other shapes, we would need a diamond on Y. But the diamond has to be connected to a cane lower than itself. So we can't have a star on N, we have to have a star up here on L. Which means we have a circle down here on G. And the only other shape that this star needs to be connected to is a cane. So we have a cane here on N. And since that cane needs to be connected to the diamond, the diamond goes here. And the last star goes down here on S. Okay, so now we need to figure out how to extract an answer for this puzzle. I'm thinking this legend over here was more than just giving us a laundry list to keep track of. I'm thinking that we need to read off the letters in this order. So first the five stars, then the circles, and so on. The first star is the letter B, and the other stars in the tree are the letter E, L, L, and S. I do the same process for the other ornaments on the tree, except they seem to give a bit more nonsense. Okay, so the stars spell out bells. Is, is bells just the answer? Is that all I needed was where the stars go? You won't find them here, but perhaps if you try, you'll find the answer twinkling down from on high. Help us diagnose what kind of ornament the culprit hates most. So perhaps the culprit hates the stars the most? 
and so only one set of ornaments actually spells a word, and that's bells. All right, our fourth feeder puzzle here, we have Least of a Feast. It's no surprise the feast was ruined as well. Though stolen or eaten, one couldn't quite tell. This was the full menu, save for one dish. What holy plate was left off the list? To the left are a number of recipes, each containing one or more cooking instructions in bold. Every recipe starts with a one-word ingredient. The answer to this puzzle is the name of the final recipe. Okay, so I think what's happening here is each cooking instruction is a different way of altering the starting ingredient. Oh, I see. Okay, so this word at the top of the recipe is what we create. We start with something that is these underlined words, I think. So over here, for example, we start with some nautical vessels, which I think are boats. And then we chop boats to get oats. So chop, chop means remove the first letter. Okay, bread, uh, lay out a wide span, trim, trim again, and then serve. A wide span. I'm not sure what a wide span is. Um, we have candy over here, which is take something useful and chill. So, oh, okay, I think this is handy. And I think chill is telling us to replace the first letter with a C. Yeah, I wish I knew what trim meant. Could trim mean remove the last letter? So I think a wide span is breadth, and trim twice means remove the last two letters. Laboratory tools used for transferring liquids. It could be beakers, or vials, or test tubes. I think when we trim the last time, we're trimming from Pierre, and then we trim again, so we're going to have a fifth letter, and then we've strained before that point. Well, over here, to get salmon, we take an edible nut. I don't know. First thing we do is trim, so we're going to remove the last letter. Add a teaspoon of salt. And serve. Tip, if you're ever running low on the starting ingredient, simply add seven teaspoons of salt to it and you'll have more? Ah, okay, I think it's almond. Okay, so an edible nut is almond. We trim it, which means we get rid of the D at the end. And then adding a teaspoon of salt is putting the S at the beginning. Next, for supper, we start with something excellent. Add three or four teaspoons of pepper. Okay, so when it tells us to add a teaspoon, is it telling us to index into the ingredient and add that somewhere? Because something excellent is super. And if we add the third or the fourth letter of pepper, that's a P either way to give us supper. Down here we have start with substance for farm animals and then boil and serve. So tip, boiling heats up air in an ingredient until it bubbles. Boil bait to get some footwear. Oh. Oh, interesting. So I think boiling replaces the letters A, I, and R with O's. So when we boil bait, it replaces the A and I to get boot. Um, I don't know what the substance for farm animals is. <laughs> okay, gum. Feel self-satisfied. That, that could be glum. But then we chop. Then stir. Um, oh, so it's probably smug. So... Don't really have a lot of room to write this, but we have smug, we chop, which removes the first letter, and then we stir, so we have M-U-G, we stir and we get gum. Stirring only affects the ends of an ingredient. Oh, that's good. So stir is swap first and last. For pecan, carefully catch a striped predator. Predator? Uh, tiger, I think. Oh, roast has, they capitalized R-O-T here. So we're going to be rotating the letters. So I'm guessing if we shift T 22 places in the alphabet, we get P? Yeah, so if you shift all of the letters in tiger 22 positions forward, you get pecan. Salad. Begin with pasta. Chop, so we're going to remove the first letter. Then roast for three minutes. So we have pasta. It becomes Asta, 
and then we rotate for three minutes, bread the result, then roast for another 15 minutes. Tip, breading involves wrapping something in dough, or at least the kind that Rachel Ray would use. I don't know what kind of dough Rachel Ray would use. I'm going to try looking up some of these crossword clues with my phone, um, just because I am struggling to figure out these last couple of instructions. Okay, laboratory tools used for transferring liquids. Maybe pipettes? Ah, uh, pipettes could work. Yeah, pipette has a lot of the letters that we need for pi. So what's strain? Is strain getting rid of any repeated letters? Ah, uh, Piet. P-I-E-T is a Dutch painter. Oh, it's tools plural, so pipettes. I see. So if we get rid of all repeated letters, we have piets, we trim it to get piet, and then we trim one more time to get pi. Okay, so let me add strain. Oh, actually, I just realized do is a note in a musical scale, as in do, re, mi, fa, so, and Rachel Ray is also, Ray is also in that scale. So are we wrapping, when we bread it, do we always wrap it in, I think we always wrap it in one of the notes from a musical scale? So actually, let me take salad backwards 15 letters to figure out what the end result of this should be. Okay, so we wrap in do, d, o when we do breading. Huh, these are some complicated cooking instructions. This is why I was never good at cooking. We, we shifted L, W, L three letters to get to that point, and hopefully that's something that means pasta. Oh, we chopped first. So we removed the first letter. Okay, so Z, so we had Z, T, which went to I, T, I when we chopped. We shifted it three spaces to get the L, W, L, and we covered it in dough. Then we shifted one more time uh, to get salad. We just have to learn mixing down here. Okay, so we start with a hair color, which is probably blonde. We chop and remove the first letter. So we have L-O-N-D. Then we trim by removing the last letter, and we have L-O-N. We stir by switching the N and the L. And then we mix with a sung poem. Um, I'm guessing that's owed, because those are the letters we have left. Tip, the order you mix things matters. Mixing M, N, and A, E will result in long hair. So that's main. Uh, okay, I think when we mix, we stagger the letters. So we go N, O, O, D, L, E. Okay, so the only one that I'm not sure of is chill. Well, hopefully it doesn't matter too much. I don't know, chill's only really used once in the final uh, set of instructions, and it's kind of the very first thing. <laughs> So, I don't know. Alright, I'm just going to keep track of my final steps on this extra piece of paper I have here. We're starting with cheese. Okay, so we start with cheese. We trim the last letter off. Now we have to chop, which means we re remove the first letter. Now we stir, which means we swap the first and the last. We chop again, so we remove the first letter. Boil. Uh, so to boil, we replace anything in air with an O. Well, there's nothing, there's nothing in air here. Feed, F-E-E-D. Okay, so maybe the boil, if it changed feed to food, maybe it just replaces all of the middle letters with an O, so maybe we get E-O-H. Um, then place in the oven to roast for 21 minutes. Z-J-C. That doesn't look right at all. <laughs> Once complete, add one teaspoon of pepper. So we add a P. Did we figure out where we add these? If you need a utensil for this dish, add two te teaspoons of pepper to something happening promptly. Oh, well that would be soon and spoon. Oh, I see. So this isn't telling us to add the second letter of pepper. It's telling us to add a P in the second spot. Was salt doing the same thing? Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's what it meant when it said add seven teaspoons of salt. It means add an S to the end of salmon to get salmons. Okay, so down here we're adding one teaspoon of pepper. So we're just adding a P at the beginning. Now roast again for five minutes. 
Add five teaspoons of salt, so we add an S to the end, and then set aside. So we just have this set of hopefully correct letters that we're setting aside for now. Now we begin our second set of instructions where we start with melon. We're going to chop, so remove the first letter. We're going to roast for 18 minutes. Okay, now we need to bread, so we add dough to the outside. Um, strain. Straining, we said, was getting rid of all repeating letters, so we get rid of the D here. Um, roast for another 8 minutes. Stir once, trim, and then roast for another 12 minutes. A lot of roasting involved. Okay, take the first dish that you set aside and mix with the second dish, and then roast for 12 more minutes. Okay, so we're going to stagger these. Now we need to roast this for 12 more minutes, and hopefully it's a real word. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be guacamole, so I think our initial chill instruction was off. Okay, so we now have our fourth answer for the puzzle hunt, and we're ready to move on to the meta puzzle. All right, here's our meta puzzle, Grinch in a Pinch. This is it, we've gathered all the clues. Now we identify the culprit to accuse. Was it the Grinch, though he may be shifty? Draw your conclusions and uncover the guilty. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my previous puzzles here and fill in the answers where I think they go. So for the presence, we had the answer returns, so I'm guessing that goes here. For the music puzzle, we had high C. For the ornaments, we had bells. And for the dinner, we had guacamole. Draw your connections. So drink quickly is probably chug. So according to this, we're probably connecting a C in answer 2 to a G in answer 1. So like we're doing this. Maybe? <laughs> um, morbid is probably grim. So a G in answer 1 to an M in answer 2. Interesting. Stuff is probably cram. So a C in 1 to an M in 2. That looks like it makes an N. This is interesting. I'm excited to see how this turns out. I want to know who framed the Grinch. This is the only other one we have between one and two. It's wind up. Coil. Coil is wind up. So C down to the L. Okay, so we made an M. The culprit is starting to reveal themselves. Um, we only have two that run between two and three. Spheres are orbs. So the O in two to the S in three. And then we have Erase. Undo. So what is that? Oh, that's an A! It's an A! <laughs> so of course my camera cut out for the very last minute of the meta puzzle solve, which is so, so frustrating. But uh, yeah, as you can see, in at the very tail end of where the video cut out here, I made the letter A with the present that runs across. And uh, let me move myself up to the top here so you can see what's going to happen at the bottom. For the last two clues, edible seed is a bean, so we connect this letter B up to the letter N up here and um, finishes, the answer is ends, so we connect this letter E down to the letter S. And so when we draw those two lines in there, you can hopefully see that we get the letter X. So the final answer is M-A-X, or Max, which is the Grinch's dog. I also looked up what the chill instruction did in that cooking puzzle because I was very curious about that one, and I was correct that the answer was handy and it changed the first letter to a C for candy, but I was incorrect in that it would always change the first letter to a C. Uh, instead, it changes H's for hot to C's for cold, so that would have changed the H in cheese to another C, and uh, that would have helped us get 
a little bit closer to guacamole. I think the other mistake in that puzzle was just something that I did in the note taking. So I hope that you enjoyed my solve of the Puzzled Pint from December of 2020. Like I said at the top of the video, Puzzled Pint has tons of puzzle sets just like this one all on their website. So I highly recommend checking them out, especially if you're new to puzzle hunts because they tend to be a bit on the easier side. My final time for the hunt was just under an hour and a half. All right, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and as always, happy escaping.